Hello, this is H1. We're going to be running it back with another episode talking about chess knowledge, chess wisdom, and chess understanding again. Today, we're going to be going over beginner games that they should be saving. And you should be saving these games from a losing position. We're going to be talking about drawing a position. And there's a few ways to draw in chess. There's, a, there's actually more than a few. There's like four good ways to draw in chess. All right, stalemate, three foot repetition, 50 move rule, um, draw by agreement, and um, insufficient pieces. So that's five ways. I was wrong about that. There's there's five ways to draw <laughs> in chess. I just wasn't adding the um, draw by agreement. But anyway, we have to learn these things so that we can lose less in chess and then we can keep our spirits up. Let's continue on with this, um, with these scenarios, these examples of how we can save certain positions. Now, Okay, here we go. We got this position here. We are the white pieces. What is going on? What is going on here? We're the white pieces. The, their queen is on a3, and we got one pawn. It seems like black is winning because they got the whole queen, but this is actually a draw. What do I mean by that? Well, it's black's move, and you know they want to get their king up there, and usually if they get their king to the position of where this king and pawn is at, then they should be able to get a win. But since the coordination is super far away, they're, they're pretty separate from each other, so they don't have a good coordination to eventually stop this A pawn from queening. Our move is going to be king B8 because we want to constantly threaten to queen that pawn. And once we queen the pawn, it should be a draw because we're gonna queen our pawn, exchange queens, and it's gonna be insufficient pieces for both sides. After this move, king to b8, they're gonna have to constantly check our king because they, they don't want us to just queen our, um, our pawn. They don't want us to queen Avery. And so we're gonna go a8 here. We could have went actually c8 in this position, but we're gonna go a8, threatening stalemate. If it's white's move again here, this is stalemate since we cannot go on the be file anymore and so after the queen moves again maybe they're like f8 king b7 we're threatening the queen if the queen just keeps on checking the king we're gonna go king b8 because we want to queen queen f8 king b7 and now if they like go go another round again it's gonna be threefold repetition so eventually it's either gonna be stalemate threefold repetition. This game cannot continue on forever, and we're just going to keep on either threatening stalemate or queening this pawn and eventually drawing the position. This is one good example of how um, chess isn't really a simple game, and you're gonna have to avoid these sort of scenarios. And the requirement for this draw is that there has to be a king ahead of the pawn. The pawn has to be on the seventh rank, and you have to make sure to avoid this queen blockading this pawn from cat uh, from promotion with this move like queen a8 so that's why we stay within like two feet <laughs> from the pawn we don't we don't want them to get in front of the pawn to prevent us from promoting now there's actually another scenario here which I'm gonna go to this is the second scenario that I wanted to talk about which is a draw um, with with the white pieces the king is on h1 my bad in this position the king is on b8 we're threatening to promote this pawn, this C pawn, and you was probably thinking, okay, N pawn, always a draw if it's on the seventh rank and the king is by it. But actually, C file, F file too, if there's a pawn and there's a king by it, it's a draw because the king is not close enough for it not to be a draw. Now, we're threatening to promote the pawn and black doesn't want us to promote. So whatever they do here, if they do king B5, you might be thinking, okay, we just could do king C8, but we, we are preventing our pawn from promoting in this position and this allows our opponent to bring their king closer to our pawn which you know we, we can fall into a scenario where we're gonna eventually eventually lose and their king is way too close and yeah we can we're not gonna save this position so instead of going to king c8 we're actually going to go to king a8 and threatening to promote the pawn. They don't got a queen behind it. They can do this move queen to c6, but do not fear because we can go right back to king b8. And they might be able to do this move queen to b6. And you might be wondering, okay, what do I do now? Because if I go king a8 in this position, queen takes on c7. But what is exactly queen takes on c7? This is stalemate. 
our king cannot go anywhere else in this position because that would be a illegal move and so it is a draw just because you have a queen in the end game doesn't mean that the game is so simple enough where um, black is going to just automatically win more material doesn't equal like a better position more material does not equal a better position all right so they can't take the pawn they can't take the pawn and they have to just keep on checking because they don't want to allow us to promote the pawn either and after they check until their heart is content <laughs> it's going to eventually eventually be a draw and of course if they go like queen ga we're going to push up the pawn and promote all right two more scenarios this is the third example which i wanted to talk about here and we are the black king and they have a pawn and they have an extra bishop so you might be thinking okay we're just losing here because their plan is very simple they just want to promote that pawn well it's not that simple actually because in this position they have the wrong bishop what do i mean by that they need a light square bishop because the promotion square is a light square or they need this pawn to be a h pawn where the actual promotion square is a dark color square what do i what like why do you need um the the bishop to attack that certain square because this king can never ever be kicked out of this a8 square no matter what you do here you can do all the bishop's moves that you want but um black is just going to spam out king a8 king b8 or like king a7 king a8 king a8 etc Black's main job is very simple. You can pretty much pre-move <laughs> all of this for the black pieces, especially if you're playing on chess.com. And if they move forward with their king and pawn, and they don't want to draw because if they do like a bishop to g3, king a8, and if they push the pawn here, this is stalemate. This is a draw. Nobody wins in stalemate, which is good for us because we was technically like we, we might have been losing here and we we got into this position where we can actually save the game and we can get our spirits up for actually like making sure that our opponent is miserable they of course do not want to um draw this position so they're gonna allow us to get that space again but what happens if the pawn reaches all the way to the a7 square well this is a draw again because our king cannot go to a square without being attacked and you know we, we don't want our king to be checked. Our king being checked here would be a illegal move. We don't want to put ourselves into check. That is not allowed. And so, yeah, right here, this is a draw. Now, let's say the king moves back. We go king b8. Let's go king b5, king a8, king b6, king b8, and then a7 check. The king goes to a i mean the pawn goes to a7 check of the king king goes to a8 king goes to a6 because if it goes away from the pawn this is stalemate the bishop is protecting the pawn so it can't capture and even if it could capture the pawn um just having a bishop isn't enough to checkmate in chess so you need like another piece maybe like a queen rook etc at, at least a rook <laughs> at least a rook here and if the king just stays near the pawn, then that's stalemate too, because we don't have any more squares to go. So stalemate is going to happen no matter what, 3-4 repetition, etc. All right. I got one last example. One last example. All right. This is going to be one example where you're going to have to practice this at home. All right. Practice. This is the final example that I'm going to be going over where you actually need to practice this because we are the black pieces. We're down one pawn and the, the plan is very simple for white is they want to promote that pawn. But our rook is behind their past pawn, which is a draw. If it was the other way around, if the rook was, if their rook was behind their past pawn, then this is a total win for the white pieces. But since we got our rook behind their pawn then it is a draw now we can go more in depth into this of course so if you want a more in-depth um in-game review of rook pawns well just put it in the comments down below <laughs> all right <laughs> I, just, I i can do it i can do that for you if you want a more in-depth rook um if you want a more in-depth rook in-game review then put it in the comments down below now since this rook is on a1 behind this pawn 
if they start pushing this pawn, we can just keep our rook behind. If the rook moves out the way by doing like rook to eight, f8 or rook to b8, they're gonna lose the pawn. So that means they're gonna have to get their king in there. And we're just gonna sit right here with our rook along this a file, because if we move our rook um, to another file, they're gonna be able to move their rook out of that a file and to eventually promote their pawn. And so after a while, they want to get our rook out the way. And so they're gonna keep on attacking it, which is fine. We're just gonna keep our rook along the A file. And after a while, if they get their king close enough to protect that A pawn, we're going to have to move the king out the way immediately. Because if we don't, then that is winning. Let's say we do a move like rook captures on f2, or if we, actually even better, if we do a move like rook to a1, because rook to, captures on f2 doesn't explain the point exactly like this. If rook goes back to a1, the king is protecting the pawn, their rook can just move out the way, and they can promote the pawn, we lose. That's why we have to be a little bit annoying and keep on checking them. Keep on checking them until they eventually eventually have to move their king away from the pawn because it's going to be threefold repetition but we need to keep our rook behind the pawn that's the that's the goal here and yeah we need to keep the rook behind the pawn we need to keep our king on g7 and h7 squares because we can fall into some traps um in rook pawn in games that can be very tricky that's a simple way on how to hold this draw with this rook pawn endgame scenario here, but you know, you're gonna need a little bit more knowledge on exactly which pawns is um, winning and which pawns are like drawn, which pawns um, are, are losing for either side, all right? Because let's say for example, let's say for example, this position occurred. This is actually still a draw, but weirdly enough, if this position occurred with white having the F pawn, this is a win. If you want a more in-depth video on it, put it in the comments down below. But yeah, that's all the knowledge that I had for today. Keep on fighting till the end, staying focused in chess, and in real life too, all right? Until next time, like the video, peace. <laughs>